But you say, is Christ in every man? Of course. Mm. How do you know? Because if Christ left you for one minute, you'd be dead. Did you hear that? If he left you for one minute, you'd be dead. Why? There's no life in your body. There is no life in your body at all. The only life in your body is the Spirit of God. What happens at the end of the road in life on this planet? When somebody comes to the end of that road, I have sat them on, on a hospital bed and held the hand of people that have passed on. And as that last breath is exhaled, as that last breath comes out, the spirit leaves the body and turns back to the world, which is and the body's dead. On the cross, it was not the nails in the cross and being nailed to the cross that killed Jesus. It was not the crown of thorns on his head that killed him. It was not the nails through his feet that killed him. It was not even the spear wound that killed him. He said, no man takes my life from me. I've got power to lay it down and I've got power to take it again. Every one of you have that power today. You've got the power to lay down your life and you've got power to take it again. What are we talking about? We're talking about your mortal life. Because God has already dealt with that. Jesus Christ went to the cross as you, not instead of you. He went there as you. And he poured out his last drop of blood to set you free from your mortality. And he was buried, and you were buried in him. And on the third day, he rose from the dead, and so did you. That was you walking out of that. And I can hear him still. I am he that liveth. I was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. And in my hand, I hold the keys of the grave and death. Hallelujah. So we're all with open face we are beholding as in a mirror mm -hmm. as in a mirror now when you look into a mirror what do you see you see yourself don't you but that's not what the bible says it says here with open face we are beholding as in a glass in a mirror the glory of the lord I'm looking in the mirror and I'm seeing the glory of the Lord. Where is the glory of the Lord? It's in you. It's in you. Come on. It's in you. It's in you. And I'm beholding it because I'm looking in the mirror. And the glory of the Lord. I'm seeing. Oh God, help us here today. And listen to this. We are seeing the glory of the Lord and while we are beholding that glory, which is the glory of the Christ Himself, okay. something's happening. That's right. We are being changed. We're not being changed by Bible study. We're not being changed by uh, just, you know, worshiping God. We're not being changed by uh, whatever else you want to do. What is it that's changing us? It's beholding the reality of who you are, which is Christ. Beholding the reality of who you are. And when you behold that reality and you concentrate on that for a little while, your consciousness picks it up. And that becomes your consciousness from that moment on. That is who I am. That is who you are. You are that Christ. You're not something like Him. You're not asking Christ to give you the power to try and resemble what He is or do what He does. No, you are that Christ. Where is He today? He is high and lifted up. 
and his train is filling this temple. This temple. Your temple. He's filling it with himself. Oh God. What time are we supposed to? Okay. We are being changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, let's put this together for you. What is the mirror? Because we're not talking about the mirror, mirror on the wall, and who's the most beautiful of us all. We're not talking about that mirror. We're not even talking about, you know, the mirror uh, that you have at your place. Let's go down to chapter, uh, chapter 4 and verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, listen to this, God, that just simply said, light appear. But this is dark. Hey, don't worry about that. Light appear. And the light was there. And the darkness disappeared. This is your light. Your life may have been full of darkness. Your body may have been filled with darkness. Sickness, pain, suffering. That's darkness. You can't look at your body with pain, sickness, and all that going on in your body and see it full of light. No, no, that's darkness. That's part of the other world. So he says, God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, where? In the face. In the face of Jesus Christ. As you behold the Lord, you are being changed. You are not being changed by Bible study. You're not being changed by spending four hours a day on your knees. You're not, you, you, you're not changed by any other kind of religious observance. It will not help you one little bit. But if you will behold the glory of the Lord, that is, you've got to recognize, hey, I am spirit. <coughs> I don't have a spirit. I said I am spirit. You are spirit today. And that spirit is Christ. <coughs> and therefore, as I'm beholding that Christ, who is the glory of God. He says you are being changed. You are being changed. Oh, Lord, help us today. Because this is the transformation. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 12 verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. Why? What will that do? Well, the renewing of your mind is really to replace this one with the reality of the mind of the Christ. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, the Apostle Paul said, Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. That's how he did it. Mm -hmm. That's how he did the miracles. Mm -hmm. That's how he was able to do what he did. Mm 